Hello, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to talk about skin cancer caused by sunlight and the new occupational disease demands primary prevention at the workplace. My name, my name is Eckhard Stockfleet. I'm uh, the chairman of the dermatology department here at the University of Bochum. Yeah, that is almost 10 years ago. This was really a breakthrough. Here, non-melanoma skin cancer risk due to occupational sun exposure. So this was really a breakthrough, especially um, for, for us, for me, as you might know, I'm, um, this is my topic, non-melanoma skin cancer. And I will introduce now to you, how did we come to that point that they accepted uh, non-melanoma skin cancer, especially actinic keratosis and squamous cell cancer as an occupational disease. So first of all, uh, you know, there are um, different types of UV exposure. It could be on the left side, the national UV radiation, which you receive when you're outside. But don't forget, we do have a lot of artificial UV radiation as well. Here, in, also very popular here in this region, open flames, glass bl blowing up, but also other um, and, uh, stuff could cause um, artificial UV radiation. So you have national and artificial together. Normally, um, UV light is easy uh, to avoid. Um, that means at least in the meantime, between 11 and uh, three o'clock in the, in the afternoon, when you stay there outside the sun, you do not receive 75% of UV exposure UVB and uh, UVA. So, and this is, uh, as you know, from the Mediterranean area, exactly the time frame where you like to have siesta or not going outside due to the heavy UV exposure. So just stay outside at that time and you receive not 75% of the UV exposure. This is uh, was a long discussion 15 years ago, UV exposure and vitamin D. You know, vitamin D is a very important vitamin for you. And vitamin D deficiency has an impact on bone, um, metabolic diseases, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, infectious, your immune system, and so on. That means if you have a low vitamin D, D um, um, amount in, in your blood, then you might get this disease. If you go too much into the sun, even you have enough vitamin D, then of course you risk skin cancer or eye disease, for, for example. So the optimal um, UV exposure, so the healthy the healthy UV exposure, let's say like this, um, then you have a minimal risk to, for both. So what did we do in, in the past? Um, I'm also the president of the European Skin Cancer Foundation, what you can see here on the bottom. And we are running together with Pierre Favre, a then a very successful SunPass project. Um, I would like briefly to introduce to you skin cancer prevention uh, in, in kindergarten in cooperation with the German Cancer Society and with Pierre Favre, a then and with the National Cancer Centers. And uh, we won the Innovation Award for that in 2013. So very brief, the goals is um, um, to reduce the UV exposure of young children in kindergarten, to raise awareness of this issue among teachers and parents and grandparents, and to reduce the incidence of skin cancer in the long-term run, of course. So this is the, one of the earliest uh, influence we like to take to UV exposure. And you know, uh, sun exposure and early childhood is one of the major risk factor to get um, a tumor later on. So very brief, what is, what is really good with this project? You reach, as I said earlier, the kids, you reach uh, the nursery staff and you reach the parents and grandparents as well. So it's more or less for every generation, a good education tool. When you work with children, uh, you have to do it a little bit different. Um, this is Anna, by the way, my third daughter. I have four daughters. So for 
uh, each campaign, I think, you know, of my daughter. So this is Anna recognizing together with her flower, which is very important. Oh, sunny day, shops were outside, playing in the sun, no shadow, nothing. And in the afternoon, she and the flower recognized, oh, that's too hot, that was too much. So they decided both next time we will do it a little bit different. And so Anna can enjoy it and uh, the flower as well. It's very funny to have something like that because uh, we always ask the children in the kindergarten to make their own story. And I have been like tons of thousands of those very nice um, pictures. Uh, European Skin Cancer Foundation, Pierre Favre, Aven, of course, we, we uh, bring that into Europe. So it's it's quite a challenge, I must say. They are always different. It's, it's, it's not like everything like in Germany. It's, uh, it could be different in or it would was different in Spain and especially in the eastern in the eastern part um, of Europe. But nevertheless, uh, it's an ongoing project. We are now in twenty three. Of course, the Corona campaign uh, was not uh, very good for that project. But now we are uh, again uh, on the way. Yeah. I was never on such a ship, but um, we are working also together with, with those cruise ships. Enjoy healthy sunshine. They have sometimes a problem that people are getting too much exposed to the sun and then on the ocean uh, where you have really a high UV uh, index. So your health is important to us. So we work together with them. Also um, to create a kindergarten there with shadows, everything, but also to inform with the people on the ship, how to behave in the sun. So we are running really quite different campaigns. So now we come to one of the very important uh, projects is uh, the use of good sunscreen. I mean, when you take a sunscreen like that, uh, you might not get a cancer, uh, but uh, you would not get that off your skin in the evening. Social contact would be not that easy. So we really um, want to give uh, sunscreen a high quality. And that, this is, by the way, why I'm working uh, with Pierre Favre Avem since almost 15 years together, because you guys, you have these high quality sunscreens. I mean, this is really a breakthrough. But this is not, not the topic, but you can see uh, that not, and you know that, that not all sunscreens are the same. And it's, it's very important when you run such a campaign and um, also with occupational um, uh, um, disease. Um, later on, I will show you, um, you have to give the employees really a good sunscreen with, with a very good coverage in different UV lens. What is very important, this was a study which I did um, almost 15 years ago. Uh, at that time, I still was at the Charité, La Charité, and with 50 medical students, and what we could show is, um, I mean, you have to apply two milligram per square centimeter on your body to get the SPF, which is on the tube, two milligram. So it means for a normal surface, like 20 gram. And, you know, I mean, we go on holidays with our family with one tube, maybe a big, but nevertheless, we come with half of them backwards. So this is not the right way. What we could show, we mixed up in the sunscreen something where we could show afterwards, okay, how much of the surface was really covered by the sunscreen? Medical students. So we told them you have to cover your whole body. We did that in the skin cancer center, so not on the beach. What they did, 33% coverage, not more. So what we learn is, first of all, vitamin D is not at all a problem. You need 10 square centimeter for 10 minutes in the summer to produce enough vitamin D. And what we learn is we have to educate the people that they have to apply sunscreen, enough sunscreen, and they have to reapply it at least four times a day. Yeah, then 2005, little bit in German because uh, uh, at that time occupational disease uh, was only in Germany. Yeah, we got the breakthrough. So the acceptance of UV lights, skin cancer, and your profession. And this is um, the BK means occupational 
um, disease or Berufskrankheit in Germany. And this is also here what you can see. Sorry, this is in German, but it, this is the law which uh, say now, okay, this is 5103. So this is now the acceptance of basal uh, of squamous cell cancer and multiple actinic keratosis. In a minute, I will go into detail what that means. So this is really by law, and this is very important. So again, we have different components of sunlight, which is accepted. Um, in Europe, at least you have to filter against UVB and UVA, but we know that around about 30% blue light also plays a very important role in the development of hyper hypopigmentation, free radicals inducing of skin cancer. And I mean, you know that um, uh, Pierre Fava then has now the only filter on the market which can filter here also. So this is a very, very important part. So there are a lot of evidence-based uh, data um, concerning UV light. So what we know is, uh, for instance, that UVC, which is really dangerous, is almost completely absorbed in the ozone layer, 90% of UVB as well. And UVA reaches the Earth's um, surface almost completely. And blue light or visible light also more or less completely. So we have to filter against uh, the sort of UV exposure. And we know, of course, how deep does the different UVB lens goes into the skin. You can see it here, UVA goes deeper, um, UVB more or less in, in, in the epidermis. But later on, I will show you also a slide with uh, blue light, which goes really deep into the skin. So I'm happy that we do not have to discuss anymore. I mean, you know, I'm now since 35 years in this field and at the beginning we had a long discussion, is UV radiation really, can UV radiation really cause cancer? Yes or no, we need it for vitamin D, yes or no. So now we know we need it for vitamin D, but not that much. And we know for sure that um, the DNA with its uh, aromatic rings is an outstanding absorber of UV radiation and so on. So whenever you have an interest to get literature um, on that from my side, so it's no problem. So due to this amount of research data, UVB is from the WOH um, accepted, WHO, the other way around, accepted as a carcinogen. So there's no discussion anymore on that. Yeah, what horses, um, too much UV exposure, I, I think everybody from us, maybe not does that look like that, but we still see that every day in the, in, in the summer here also at my clinic, where people really get a sunburn, you can see it directly here, very clear sunburn. So this is sunburn in grade one and grade two, but you can get it also in grade three where you really have huge bulle. This is painful, sure, um, and absolutely not good for the skin because um, you really cause here DNA damage. So, and due to the amount of sunburns in very early childhood, you statistically significantly increase um, your risk to develop later on skin cancer. It, it develop a little bit on your skin type. And then um, at the end of the day, this, this lady is only 40 years old. And we do see that very, very much, only 40 years old, and see what 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 we have here is what we call field cancerization. It means wherever you take a biopsy here, you will see in the histopathology and um, uh, yeah, apoptosis, necrosis, DNA uh, damage, and uh, and tumor cells, of course. So this is really a problem because this lady, only 40 has a highly increased risk to develop all, all types of skin cancer, which caused by UV light. So it's it's actinic keratosis, it's squamous cell cancer, it's basal cell cancer, but it's also melanoma and Merkel cell cancer as well. So that is one of the reasons why we do see such an increase on skin cancer worldwide. Look to this. So, and, and, and by the way, when, when I, 
talked to yesterday, I, I did uh, something with young students. Um, I'm not talking so much about skin cancer. I talk about photo aging. I mean, look to this. When you just see that, you might expect that the patient is maybe 80, but not 40. So cosmetic and photo aging, photo damage skin is, of course, a big issue. 80% of all skin tumors are located on sun exposed skin areas, sun terraces. So this is a very important part. So, and here especially you need um, yeah, sun protection. And later on I will show you which type of sun protection and clothes as well, of course. Yeah, now we come to the definition of BK. You remember Bruce Erkrankung, occupational disease. And here's the number which you find in the in the north. So it's 5103, which is very important. And um, except it is that uh, with squamous cell cancer and with actinic keratose or bones disease, which is very typically an early type of a cancer. We might get in the future also basal cell cancer. It's an ongoing discussion. At the beginning, we left basal cell cancer outside because I would say they would never accept it because we have so many basal cell cancer. So for us, it was very important to get into this occupational disease. And um, later you will see why. Acceptance first, actinic keratose, squamous cell cancer, because they are actinic keratose. So it's clearly related to UV exposure. And it's the early stage of um, uh, this invasive squamous cell cancer. So how, how is the definition also um, in other countries or will be? So this is everything is in, in, in guidelines and in S3 guidelines. So and we have S3 guidelines for uh, Germany, but we have S3 guidelines, of course, also for, for Europe. So actinic keratosis are considerable multiple. This is now the definition. Which you will find, uh, which you find in the law, if they occur with a number of more than five per year individually, or confluent in an area of more than four centimeter, what we define at that time as a field cancerization. You cannot believe, but this definition took us uh, years, years, uh, or yeah, at least. But this is a clear definition now. And again, actinic keratose or bones disease. Yeah, so the insurance company um, uh, who are responsible for that, um, they have to pay for prevention, they have to pay for the treatment, and they have to pay for research as well. So it's completely different type of money you get. So it's not your normal health insurance. It's the insurance which are responsible for those employees. So research project here, again, a number. And this is one of the ongoing research project also from our side, protective components to reduce solar UV exposure for outdoor workers. Of course, you have to sh show it. We are doing that together here with, um, with the uh, guys who are responsible for these um, research. And then analysis of um, yeah meteorological uh, data, which is very important, especially when you go for Europe. Don't forget, I'm here speaking for Europe, not only for, for Germany. UV exposure data is standardized for Germany and Central Europe as well, which is, of course, very important also for Brussels. Prevention measures are relevant for the whole of Germany and Central Europe. And that was very important for all of us that um, the day will come and it comes now that it is not only accepted now in Germany, it's for, for, for example, also now accepted in Belgium as an occupational disease and other countries will hopefully follow, but will follow. So responsibility, important word. Employers are legally responsible for the health and safety of the employees in the workplace. It's in whole Europe, the case. Carrying out the risk assessment, checking the effectiveness of protective measures, instruction of employees, information on occupational health care. So, so we are working now in, in this field together with, with those um, insurance companies 
to get out uh, really, okay, what do we have to do in the future? One of the first things, and this is what we learned already from the SunPass project, which I introduced earlier to you, is um, protection recommendations for the UV index. The UV index, sorry, this is in German, but um, this means if you have a very high index, you need special protection. If you have low index, like one and two, there's normally no protection necessary. But when you go higher, and normally, and it depends where you are in Europe, in the summertime, you are in between wherever, between five and, and 10. So you need special protection. And what I told you, of course, stay out of the sun between 11 and, and three, use enough sunscreen uh, and clothes as well. I will go into that in a minute. Central results already we had here um, is uh, organizational and technical measures often need to be supplemented by individual protective measures. In Germany, standard clothing with uh, uh, headgear and sunglasses, sunglasses also a very important part, supplemented by sunscreen provide effective sun protection. Yeah, so it's, about, it's always a combination. It's not just the sunscreen, it's not just the clothes, it's a combination. Adequate sun protection does not have to be expensive, but it must be applied consist uh, consistently. This is what I told you with, with the study with, with the students. So um, we need effective sunscreens, which you have. We need sunscreens um, with a broad spectrum of UV protection. Yeah, then of course, technical and organizational measures. And you, you can see whatever you like here, of course. Important, again, what we learned also from the kindergarten for shadow shedding is, is very important. Um, and of course, to educate, to educate the people. So um, here, uh, textile UV protection with an UV protection factor. This is already established, of course, in Australia. I saw that in the United States as well. So we have it here placed, of course, uh, very effective. Um, and then all the other ones, hats, cap, safety helmets, sunglasses, and always waterproof sunscreen with a high SPF for all uncovered areas of the skin. And it would be nice if this could be a medical product. As a sunscreen, you know that I'm a fan of medical products and sun on sunscreens. Um, because that convince people more easily because um, you have the um, evidence-based data behind that. Yeah, this is a new fashion. Um, I mean, when you when you go to Australia, you do see all the people, the outside workers running around like this. So this is uh, very important to protect yourself with clothes, with helmet, with sunglasses and, of course, um, with um, um, sufficient sunscreen. Training is very important uh, for field workers, development, delivery of information and training material. Keep KISS, keep it simple, as it's very important there. Education about OV risk and protective measures, raising risk awareness, that's very important. For example, shifting work to shattered areas, shifting work and break times. Do not work it, not directly in the sun between 11 and 3, what I told you. Try to skip that a little bit, go more in the evening or start earlier. This is exactly what the people already do um, in Australia and in, in other parts uh, of the world. How can I protect myself? Uh, I told you, kiss, keep it simple. A, B, C of light protection. And A, avoidance, B, body covering, and C, cream apply. So I translated that a little bit from German to, to, um, to English. In, in Germany, everybody knows A, B, C, D because of uh, detecting the melanoma. So this is quite nice. Avoidance, stay out of the sun, body covering, I told you and apply a cream uh, enough and sufficiently. Now, of course, um, you have to identify problems in the education uh, program. 
here you can see what we have. Uh, let's say lack of recommendations for actions, lack of whatever. There's a lot of things to do. We, we are learning in the process. So wherever we go, for, for instance, um, uh, at the end, I will show you an example. Um, outdoor worker is not like outdoor worker. So they are, they are different. I give you uh, in a minute an example. For us as a dermatologist, regular examination of the external workers as a high risk group is very important. Maybe you know that we have here the skin cancer screening program in Germany since almost 10 years, where we screen every everybody who is older than 35 can be screened for free every second year. So this is established um, here in, in Germany. Um, but we have to identify, of course, high-risk patients like external workers, high-risk patients like organ transplant patients, high-risk patients, chronic immunosuppressed patients. So they need a regular examination. Sorry, this is in German, but should show you campaigns we are currently running uh, with your insurance company who is responsible for uh, building uh, build up buildings, so auto workers, and then they show um, how they, they use, um, that they should um, uh, not go directly into the sun, use sunscreen, and uh, use sunglasses and, and sufficient sunscreen as well. So this is not anymore allowed uh, in, in, in Germany that you are running naked uh, through the desert, I would say, uh, over your working place. So you have to protect by law yourself, and this will be controlled uh, uh, from the insurance company. All right. One of the insurance companies I told you were responsible for building houses and so on. Uh, they are really working hard on this. So launch of a dedicated awareness campaign on the risk of skin cancer for employees who regularly work outside improvement of primary situation and behavioral prevention to prevent negative medical and economic consequences. And maybe I go a little bit here due to the time frame. If detected early and treated correctly, novel and skin cancer uh, can be easily cured. I mean, the early stage, you know that um, like actinic keratosis, you can even use your cream, your 5-FU cream. So every case from 5103 is the results of a failure of prevention. I mean, it takes years and decades to develop the skin cancer. So far, we have time enough to, to um, uh, yeah, speed up with our prevention program. So last but not least, uh, the summary I want to give to you. Um, Non-melanoma skin cancer is a possible occupational disease, so it depends. So you have to work more than 10 years outside to receive 40% more of UV exposure due to your uh, due to your job and the numbers of AKs, you remember that. And um, then here the excellent interest of the employees, liability insurance associate must pay, now this is very important, must pay for prevention. That means the insurance companies, when you are accepted with your actinic keratosis and squamous cell cancer, then your insurance company have to pay for the sunscreen. And they ask me which sunscreen should be used. There are tons of sunscreen on the market. You know that better than I am. Um, but I think you have a big advantage uh, by using your sunscreen because of the coverage, uh, for example, in the blue light area. So um, Belgium followed the German model already. Of course, Belgium, Brussels, Belgium, this was very important for us. And we hope that other EU countries will follow. So the European Skin Cancer Foundation will bring that into the countries together with you. And that is the reason why I really support uh, this project and uh, what we are doing together and spread around the knowledge. And thank you very much for your attention.